In this video, we'll be exploring using Retool with GraphQL. Retool comes packed with many components that you can use when querying data via GraphQL or another data source. You can connect many different endpoints, transform those, work with authentication, and even GraphQL mutations. It's a very popular tool and can connect to almost any data source. So let's log in and create our first resource. I'm going to create a new resource, and from the supported API types, I'm going to pick GraphQL. For the purposes of this video, we'll just call this blog. Then for the base URL, I'm going to be using a project that I've deployed to GraphBase. So here I have my GraphQL endpoint, which I can paste here. And then for the header, we'll go ahead and pass XAPI key as my API key, and I will paste in the API key for my project. Now this API key does grant access to everything, but what you can also do with Retool is scope your logged in user to use authentication that way, as long as the underlying API supports it. We're using a backend with GraphBase in this video, but you could use almost any GraphQL API and it'll work the same. We'll leave everything else as is, and we'll go ahead and create that resource. If you had multiple APIs, you can continue to add those, but for now, let's head on over to the query library. Let's go ahead and create a new query. From the resource type, we'll select blog. Then instead of here, we can write our GraphQL query. So let's name our query, get all posts, and we'll use GraphQL variables for our pagination value first. Let's fetch all of the edges. For each of our post nodes, let's go ahead and fetch the ID, title, and the URL. Then if we scroll on down, we can see here variables first has been populated because we've passed it here instead of a GraphQL variable. So let's give this a default value and we'll say 10. And we don't need to provide any additional headers at this point, but just know that you could if your requests required any. Finally, let's go ahead and update the name of this to get all posts and then save. All that's left to do is share this query. Now let's head on over to apps and we'll create our first app. Give your app a name. Now we've created our app, we can import that same query and execute it and show the results in a table. You don't need to create all of your queries ahead of time instead of the resource library, but it's great if you want to create multiple apps using that same query, you don't have to repeat yourself. So here from the query, we'll choose to import from query library, and then we can select the query that we shared, get all posts. Let's go ahead and save and run. Once that query runs, we can see now that we have a response from our API. Now from the components list, let's grab the table and drag this into the app. We can see immediately here that the table is fetching some data for each of our nodes. For the columns in our table, let's add some new ones. The first thing that we'll want to show will be the ID. And for the value, we'll select the current row, node, ID. Then let's add another column for the title. And again, we'll use that current row, node, title value. And then finally, we'll add the URL for our posts. Then let's hide the default node column. And there we have it. We have some data that's fetched from our GraphQL API and shown instead of a custom table here. We've not had to write any code at this point. We've simply used the pre-existing component from Retool and then configured which fields match that of inside of the object. Now let's take this a step further by configuring a custom action. Scroll down to the action section and click add. And once you add an action, there will be a custom button that's added to every row. For the first action, let's set this to delete as the text. And then for the action button type, you can select to run a query and we haven't created any query just yet. We'll create that next. So inside of here or inside of the query resource editor, we can add a new query. Let's name this query delete post. And then inside of the query here, we'll run a mutation and we'll use GraphQL variables for the post ID. Then we'll use the mutation post delete and we'll pass to the by argument, the ID from the variables. Then we'll simply return the deleted ID. Then for the ID value, we'll select the table and the selected row and the node ID. Now, if we save this, we go back to our action and we update the action query to run that post mutation that will then execute a mutation when we click the delete button. So if we hit delete, this will execute a mutation that deletes that record. And here we can see instead of the response that the post was successfully deleted. But you may have noticed that the table here doesn't have the up-to-date data we still have that row that we've just deleted. If we go back and run that query once again, we'll now see that we only have two records coming from our backend. But what we would like to do when we execute this mutation is to automatically run that query again. So let's scroll down instead of a delete post action here. Let's scroll down to the event handlers for the delete post. And when the event is successful, let's add a new action control query. We'll select the query query one, and we'll select the method as trigger. 
You can further configure this handler to only run when a certain condition is met. So here we can configure that when the deleted ID is truthy to run. And now we can see we have one trigger. And if we save it, and we go back to our table now, and we delete this item here. Now we can see the table is automatically updated and that query is ran once we run that delete mutation. There's so much more you can do with Retool and GraphQL and we explore that in another video.